Hello, I'm Mr. Montgomery. In this video, I'm gonna introduce you to a celestial sphere. Talk about its key components and why it's useful in studying astronomy. So the celestial sphere is built to show you from our point of view on Earth how things appear as we look out into the, the sky, particularly the nighttime sky. So you can see this is really just an Earth globe with a larger clear globe built around it. And on this clear globe, you can see things like the constellations, because from our point of view on Earth, you know, we see these particular constellations and it looks like to us all of these um, stars are just making whatever particular picture we're talking about. But really these stars, some are closer to Earth, some are farther away from Earth, but it just shows us our point of view. Um, key points on this globe, one would be um, the celestial North Pole. Uh, so that's just the Earth's North Pole extended out into space. Same thing with the South Pole, just extends out into space. And then you can see where these two shells are glued together here, that that represents the Earth's equator. And so this celestial equator is just the Earth's equator extending out into space. It just helps to kind of divide the sky into you know, north and south, almost like we divide the Earth into north and south. On Earth, we talk about longitude and latitude. On the celestial equator, we talk about um, right ascension and declination in order to find a particular place in the sky. Um, but the other key thing here is what's called the ecliptic. And the ecliptic is the path the sun appears to take through the sky. Now, granted, the earth is orbiting the sun. It's not the sun orbiting the earth like this globe makes it look. Um, but you might be able to see on here, um, let me get myself where I can see what you're seeing here. Um, like here, April 15th, April 20th, on up here. I know I had to get the lighting just right in order for you to be able to see the letters on here, like May and June. Um, and so it shows you where the sun appears to be. And so some key points would be when the sun gets as high or as far north as it possibly can, from the equator, that's the official start of summer. That is the summer solstice. Um, and so if we go from there, I gotta flip my sides around here. And as the sun continues progressing on into July and August, when the sun reaches the equator, you have the autumnal equinox. You're gonna get um, a day with 12 hours of daylight or 12 hours of, of darkness. And the sun continues on now it's south of the equator. So fall is occurring for the Northern hemisphere until you get down here to late December, around December 21st or 22nd. And the sun's gonna be as far south of the equator as it gets. Uh, that's going to be the beginning of winter, the winter solstice, the start of winter. And then the sun's gonna progress into January and February, and you can see it's getting now closer to the equator. And we're gonna get here in March, around March 21st or so. And the sun's gonna line up with the equator, and that's going to be the vernal equinox, or so the first day of spring. And then that progresses back to where we started a moment ago, when the sun returns to the first day of summer, as it's as high or as far north of the equator as it can get. So the celestial sphere is useful just for kind of observing or showing the observations that we do make from planet Earth. 